We will wait to see um, the action taken from that. But I want na us now to focus on the final topic of the floods that we have experienced in the country the past few days. The Kenya Red Cross is saying that uh, 35 people have lost their lives from the flood situation in the country. And uh, they are saying, the weatherman is saying that the situation will get worse with more rain expected in the country. Um, let me begin with you, Peter Orero, here to paint us a picture of what you may have witnessed in the uh, city county, but also what you think needs to be done because it appears they were getting into a situation of where we need to save lives faster than we have. Uh, I get pained when I talk about uh, these floods. You know, I represent informal sector and uh, where the river just cuts across uh, the informal sector. Uh, on, on Monday, I think we lost four people on uh, a mother and a daughter and uh, two people on a motorbike. Uh, mm -hmm. They were, they drowned. Now, ap apart from that, the houses have been affected, the floods have affected our houses in Kibra. The Red Cross was there last week, but they, they are still, they are overwhelmed. Uh, the people have moved from the grounds, the, um, uh, from the river banks to higher grounds. Mm. And the last two days, it has even rained heavily, heavily, and you know, it comes from Gong down to uh, 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 my constituency. Not only in my constituency, but I think in Nairobi, uh, because of the system, the sewer system and the other system, the ground is flat. And after a very short while, it floods uh, it extremely bad. Last year, and all the beginning of this year, we had been told that we were expecting El Nino and a lot of funds were preserved so that we could deal with El Nino yes. and emergency funds. But at a certain point, again, we were told that God was so faithful that the El Nino was not going to come. But with us now, the rains that we are experiencing is like El Nino. We need to have a proper way of dealing with this El Nino and floods, especially when we put aside the emergency funds. We have not seen the local government for Nairobi. They have not come to our rescue. People are being uh, taken away by floods. People are dying, floods. The houses are getting flooded. And we must see how best, <coughs> the best way that the emergency system within our city council must give priority right. to areas that are affected by floods. If the city center gets flooded, what about the informal say when you go to Madari? Do you really know how those people are affected? When you go to Mukuru Kwajenga, when you go to Talamarigo, Isili, when you come to Kibra, when you go to Dagoreti, we have to see how these emergencies are, can be used to save the lives of our people who are living along the riverbanks and the roads which are not termed. Like, in my place, there is a road now which is impossible. <clears throat> this road has been there for the last two years. We have pushed the ministry that they take a responsibility. They have even given a contract to Kura. For the last one year, this road has not been repaired. In fact, I was just talking, I, I should go and see Murkom. I hope he is going to get this. Let me talk to him here now. <laughs> that he should ensure that that road is, is the only road in Kibra. Even my friend here, I know she normally comes to Kibra quite often, but without my permission, next time, please tell me when you're coming. <laughs> He's afraid I'll get her. <laughs> and she knows the road I'm talking about. Mm. It is in a pathetic situation. And this is a city. If the people are neglected, apart from the rains that now is, there, is causing havoc, we must have a proper implementation uh, framework uh, the governor must uh, call his tools and people together. They must see ways of salvaging what we are remaining with and okay. not let it go to uh, rot. So I think that uh, these floods are causing a big havoc in the city. And Harbo Mbui, I saw your governor yesterday speaking about the situation in Siokimau and um, residents there are complaining that um, it's getting worse on a daily basis. And, uh, I mean, if you live on the ground floor, too bad, because you will not have access to your house for some days. What are we dealing with? And are there solutions? Because that's already a built environment 
but this continues to happen. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Sam, you know, this issue of, uh, of flooding is, is a very painful thing. I mean, uh, it is true sometimes uh, floods and, uh, you know, drought, those could be acts of nature, but there's also human error. And I think in this case, uh, we, we have a lot of it. You know, Kenya has enough professionals that can be able to design our cities and our urban areas, even our rural areas and our roads in such a way, uh, you know, and bridges in such a way that we can be able to operate uh, throughout the year. But you have seen situations where houses are flooded. You've seen situations where roads are completely washed away. You've seen situations where bridges, which are supposed to have us drive over the water, have water passing over them. So it's, it's something to do with the, how we do our things. And some me, I think uh, that our biggest problem is corruption. I think there's corruption in planning. Now, the, the reality is that uh, some of the consultants that are given jobs, <coughs> you know, some of these jobs are multi-million, uh, you, know, uh, you know, shilling or dollar, whatever, um, uh, dollar, dollar projects. I mean, there are they are, they are contracts on uh, consultants that are actually run into billions. So because of the amount of money, there is also a high level of corruption in some of them. So the professional, if we are a professional consultant consulting on roads, consulting on an estate, what would happen is that uh, if you have to compromise and give someone money, then chances are that you not put your best foot forward, you not put your most expensive stuff, so that the reports that come out are probably mediocre. That is one of the problems that we are having. The other problem, again, is corruption on implementation. Now, for you to come up with a housing estate, Sam, you require to get approvals of NEMA, you require approvals of the National Construction Authority, you require also the county governments to give an approval. County governments need to understand the issue of approvals is not just a taxation matter, that they collect money from their offices. They have to also go out and look at the areas where projects are supposed to be put up so that they can be able to give advice. Now, unfortunately, because of corruption and because people will give money, they end up building uh, housing estates that do not have drainage systems like the one you saw in Sokimau. The argument was that uh, the developer was told to put up uh, a drainage system. The cost of the drainage system is prohibitive, so he decided to put up the houses, sell them, and now when you buy the house, it's difficult for you as an individual to do due diligence and figure out whether there's drainage. After all, some of these heavy rains come after like 10 years. So the problem we are facing is really an issue of corruption. And maybe we need to figure out how can we be able to, to deal with these people that have already broken the law, because already some, some laws, some bylaws are already broken. So some of these estates, uh, some are built on riparian land, just completely at the river, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and you know what happens is that uh, when it's dry, the water is not there, the river is dry. Some of these are seasonal rivers. So people come and sell land, you come up with a project, they advise you, the county approves. But the county should know which areas can you build on. The county should be able to deal with these things. And you know, Sam, it's, it's, it's a tragedy because in this country, planning seems to be a joke. You, you come up with a housing estate, people have built houses that are bungalows. And somebody is approved to put up a, a skyscraper next door. So one house is a bungalow, the next one is a skyscraper, 10 floors, the next one is a bungalow. Why can't we have proper planning so that we figure out who can build where in our cities, what kind of house, where exactly where it can be built, how do we drain the water? Those are the things that we must be dealing with. Because we, we, if we don't do that now, we'll continue going around in circles and we'll keep losing a lot of money. And people, I saw people being told in Machakos, uh, come out of your houses, you go and stay in a police camp. You can imagine, you've put up a house, you have children on holiday, and you're being told to come out of your house, and then you're, you, you jump into a police uh, lorry and be taken to some camp, you know? And you're not, you're not, you're not a poor person, you've afforded to buy a house. Right. It's, it's unfortunate, Sam, it's really, really unfortunate. And, and much more, Hassan, how bad is the situation in your constituency? And are there lasting solutions? Because it, it appears, I mean, there will always be seasons of rain and um, dry weather. Are there sustainable solutions to getting to deal with this? Of course there are, but you know, um, Nairobi as a city is facing some uh, chronic, uh, deep-rooted, uh, some uh, historic uh, in nature. You know, uh, this um, misplanning, poor planning uh, has been going on for so long uh, that um, uh, the city authorities have lost control. They have uh, 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 no enforcement uh, um, capabilities. Uh, and uh, to a certain extent, we have a very chronic planning problem um, where there's rapid, uh, uh, rapid uncontrolled development, uh, which is 
centered in corruption. And uh, the Eastlands uh, suffers quite a lot because we, we're in the lowlands, we're on a flat, uh, swampy area, um, and, uh, and you have rivers and streams that have been built over and blocked, uh, sending the water uh, into the houses uh, and, and the settlements of the community. For example, along, all along the Nairobi r River in my neighborhood, uh, there have been heavy flooded, uh, flooding, flash floods. Uh, the informal settlements have been affected because they are right on the edge of the river. Nothing has been done over the years to provide them with, uh, um, uh, with drainage or to move them uh, away from, uh, from the river. Uh, the planning that takes place, the construction industry now, is completely out of control. And it is uh, corruption is the, is the main problem. The planning department in our capital city is full of um, corrupt people. Um, uh, planning permissions are given without due consideration in, in, in what is happening on where they have been built. And so you have a normal residential neighborhood where uh, a house that would normally accommodate five people is demolished. And on top of it, you build uh, a 15, 10 story, 15 story building without the infrastructure. There's no sewage, there's no drainage. And naturally, whenever there's a disaster of this kind, you can easily find out the answer is that there would be flooding, uh, there would be blockage, uh, there would be losses, uh, uh, both in terms of investment and in terms of business. And unless the Nairobi government can reverse this process, and can um, clean up its uh, planning department. Right. I don't know whether even the, uh, the governor has um, control over it because when huge amounts of money is changing hands, um, uh, civil servants at the lower level disregard the instructions. You say huge money changing hands? Yes, for planning permissions. When somebody is building a building in the wrong place with, the, with absolutely no infrastructure to support it, then obviously such kind of um, permission should be reached. Um, so, so what declined. should happen? Because the city is obviously expanding outside the core of what it was, and people are coming up with different structures on a daily basis. So what is, is essentially should happen? Because I also see some developers coming up with their own local solution of a sewage system. But it's not sufficient. If the place did not have a, a, proper, a properly built uh, sewage system, if it doesn't have a proper d drainage system, if there is no sufficient water supply, when you build a 10-story uh, building or 15-story building, uh, you're going to put up thousands of people up there. Mm -hmm. um, what is the, the waste uh, management uh, aspect of that building? Uh, where is the drainage? Where is the water? All these things uh, should be uh, taken into consideration by a properly functioning right. and um, uh, an ethically right um, a planning department. Mm. Now, I'm in favor that we should build um, uh, upwards. Uh, we should, um, uh, because there's no space to, to spread the city anymore. But I think there is a problem when you actually are um, uh, not following your own um, environmental and planning permission, and instead you take money to allow a builder to construct that particular uh, building uh, without any supervision, with without any control. And many of the problems we are seeing in our capital city and in my neighborhood is this uncontrolled, un not well-planned right. uh, uh, projects. I was coming from Kisumu on Sunday on a flight and uh, we passed over Siu Kamau. And you could see uh, est new estates uh, where the, there is a stream or a river going right into the middle of it. Mm. Who gave the permission to do that? Th that kind, that uh, planner or that authority is criminal. Mm -hmm. Because why would you do that? Once the rain comes, water uh, and nature finds its way. And this is what we have in Nairobi. In many of these swamps, um, we have overbuilt uh, and um, uh, there is very poor planning and uh, corrupt officials are making it uh, difficult okay. for Nairobi to be fixed. All, all right. Yeah. What if those people that gave approvals had fixed certificates? Um, <laughs> <but anyway. laughs> Honorable Speaker, I wanted to have the final word on this, especially on, because if structures have already been put up, they have been put up, and I'm not sure there's anyone willing, here willing to go and put them down, but how do we improve the infrastructure, at least for the future? 
I think there's no choice. You can actually put them down. If you remember, next to Westgate uh, Mall, there was a building called UK Centre. Yeah. Mm. UK Centre was built on a riparian zone mm. alongside many other buildings. Mm. They were actually brought down. I was talking about building without uh, supporting infrastructure. No, if I, I think, first of all, the clarity should be no one should build on the riparian zone. Because many years ago when we had the first El Nino, that's when we saw nature fighting back. Because it doesn't matter how many years it takes, mm. the river will eventually come back to where it's supposed to be. And that was what happened. And so we have to correct that. Anyone on a riparian zone, it does not matter. Mm -hmm. They will have to bear, they, the building has to come down. It has happened in the past. We have done it. It's the only way to correct the situation. You cannot move the river. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you can remove the building. Even now, after UK Centre and uh, all the other buildings were demolished, we still have the Visa, Visa Oshwal Temple mm -hmm. uh, next to it, which there's always a flood on that particular bridge. Mm -hmm. That's the, going towards uh, the Parklands Ring Road. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that my car was damaged on that road many years ago because we, the, the bridge itself was flooded. And it was the bridge between the former UK Centre and Visa Oshwal, but nobody has had the guts to demolish that temple. The temp part of the temple is on a riparian zone. So unless we make those difficult decisions as a country, then we are not going to change anything. And remember, anybody who's buying, uh, the developer, the person who's the owner of the title, knows it's a riparian zone, because it's very mm -hmm. obvious on the, on the title document. There is no title document in Kenya right. that says that a riparian zone is not a riparian zone. So the person knows, but what they do is they bribe people at the planning department, the city planning department, and what happens is they get approval to be able to build on it. And then the next thing, you know, is, uh, is damage. There was, uh, and so this is not something that we are seeing for the first time. It has happened before. We have, uh, we, when we had the first El Nino rains, so unless we begin to take responsibility, that yes, and you can go after the developer. If somebody else bought the property, but the developer knew, the owner of the title did know. We've, uh, in, the, in the countrysides, I think that is an easier problem to deal with. It is known by scientists and those people who are experts right. where water normally flows when there is heavy rains. Okay. We need to begin to build dams in those areas so mm -hmm. that we can dam the water. I think I've seen it in Sekuru areas, Se Sekuru, Se the home of Kalonzo Musioka. Sekuru. Yes, yes, those areas. You can, the, I mean, the, one time they have no water at all, but if you dam that water. Even in their place. Yes, even your place. If you dam the water properly, you know, right. that water, this water that we would have collected now would have lasted us a few years. All right. Um, uh, one only wishes that um, something can be done. Uh, to make sure that we don't have this conversation next rainy season. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at the feedback that has come to us at Citizen TV Kenya at some get to start to use this daybreak. <coughs> and um, Kenyans are saying that um, in general, as again, we close, give politicians leeway to create uh, uh, inexistent positions in their dockets to fix uh, in cronies, then come back to us to complain of our rising <laughs> wage bill while silent over corruption. <laughs> Enemy of developing nations is bad politics and nepotism. Aokelo Molimu, our president really knows the challenges the country is facing. He passionately articulates them in every single moment, like we witnessed in the wage bill conference, perfect. However, the ter he terribly fails in implementation of his populist plans. Bovi Roy, this issue of bloated wage bill has been politicized too much. We need to review job descriptions of government officers, root out those who have fake certificates and reduce travel expenses. All right, I'm Danny Allen. A reduction in wage bill doesn't necessarily mean job losses. We can agree that all public servants can get a salary reduction with the highest paid, that is, uh, <laughs> what is that, President of the Republic of Kenya, Deputy President, did you have to say that? Of the Republic of Kenya, PCS, CS, MPs, Senators, Governors, should get a 70% reduction. 70% reduction? Okay. <laughs> um, weekly laws give politicians leeway uh, no, we already that. read this, and I have to thank you all uh, for making time for us. Um, Mushmua Yusuf Hassan, he has already demiked himself. Uh, Honorable Gladys Bos, the Deputy Speaker of National Assembly, Peter Orero from Kibra, and um, the Member of Parliament for Katiani Constituency, Robert Mboy, for making time for us. My name is Sam Gichuku. Up next is Matters uh, Social.
I'll see you again some other time. A better morning.